Hello everyone, my name is Louise, and welcome to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be doing a Paul McCartney and Wings slash Paul McCartney solo career albums ranked tier list. Sorry, that's a lot. That's really wordy. Um, but basically, I'm going to be using this chart here that I created and ranking all of the albums by Paul McCartney, um, in my opinion. Um, and it's going to be from worst to best. And the ranks I have are unbeatable, which is like best of the best, can't top it, nothing ever will. Almost unbeatable is... I, I love it a lot, but it's not quite perfect to me. Great is a little less loving than that. Good is a little less loving than that. Tolerable would be kind of like a guilty pleasure, where, like, I have to be in the mood to like it. Meh would be... There's some, album, there's some songs that I like on it, but overall I don't really like it. And awful would be... The entire album sucks, and then, of course, never listen, listen to. Hopefully my rankings make sense. I've never really done a tier list before. I don't really know how to name my categories, but I'll try to explain it as I go on, and hopefully it makes sense. And we're going to go in order. So the first one on my little bottom diagram here is Egypt Station 2018. Egypt Station is an amazing album it really is i've been um really obsessed with uh, despite repeated warnings as of late and the thing with this album and i think many of these albums is the extra tracks if i count the extra tracks like for example frank sinatra's party i would definitely put it probably between either great or almost unbeatable but I think they're just referring to the standard album, and I do love this. I I do love um, you know "Fuck You," "Who Cares," uh, "Despite Repeated Mornings," like I said. Um, but because it's missing a lot of the you know bonus tracks that make me love it, I think I'm gonna have to knock it down to. Great. Alright. Next one is Flowers in the Dirt. And before we continue, I just want to say sorry if my um, descriptor of my opinions isn't the best. I'm not really good at explaining myself. Hopefully my descriptors of these, how I'm ranking these, also make sense. Like I said, I've never really done this before, so hopefully um, you guys can bear with me. But anyway, um, Flowers in the Dirt. Um... I have heard this album a little bit. Rough Ride, I think, was the song I listened to. Here's the, here's the thing. Whenever I whenever I listen to Paul's music, I get fixated on a specific track or two in each album. And and usually that happens with every album. I get I get fixated on something in it. Um, I don't know. There's something. I don't know. I, I honestly. I think a lot of my older viewers are probably going to come at me for this, um, but I can't really get attached to Flowers in the Dirt. I think I'm going to have to put it at meh. At least for now. And, I'm, and here's the thing with these rankings, too. As I think about it, I might switch it around. Um, so right now, uh, Flowers in the Dirt is going to be at meh. Alright, new, 2013. Again, I don't know if they're referring to the standard album. I think they are. So I'm just going to play it by the standard album. And then maybe I'll, maybe I'll put in the um, bonus tracks into play as well. But for now, let's just do ranked by the um, standard album. But anyway, new, 2013. I adore this album. I really love Queenie Eye. Um, I love Alligator, um, I Can Bet, and, um, New, of course, the title track is fucking amazing, too. Um, yeah, man, I, I might have to put New at almost unbeatable. Or unbeatable, I don't know. Um, 
that wow i don't know if it's me if i made this list too hard i don't know uh, see if, if, if we're putting in the bonus tracks like hell to pay demons dance and struggle i would put it at unbeatable um but if we're going by the standard album, I think we're gonna have to do almost unbeatable. Just because those songs are not it, and that's not really fair to rank it like that. So I'm gonna put it at almost unbeatable. Kisses on the Bottom, 2012. Um, this album um is quite slow compared to most of his. I mean, I know every album kind of has a slow song. You know, McCartney 2 has Waterfalls, for instance. You know. Um, but a lot, a lot of, um, Kisses on the Bottom is covers of, like, old, like, 1930s stuff, isn't it? Someone in the comments will have to correct me on that, but, and, you know, I like it, I do, I, I actually do really like it, um, it's definitely not a go-to, um, you know, I wouldn't go there, like, hey, I want to listen to Paul right now, I need a good... Like, mm, for my mood. You know, it's, not a, it's definitely not a go-to for me. Um, I think I'm going to put it at a good because I do love My Valentine and a lot of his co covers, like um, My Good Friend the Milkman, I think is the song, is pretty decent. I don't know. I'm kind of debating. I might put it at tolerable because, like I said, it's not really a go-to. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it at tolerable. Okay, this album right here. I don't know what album that is. What album is that? Oh, Run Devil Run. I'm gonna have to put that at. I've never listened to. Wow. I didn't think there was one that I didn't know, but yeah, I never listened to. Okay. Wow. Chaos and Creation in the Backyard, 2005. Um, this this album um has promised you, girl. Jenny Wren. Fine line, which I've used in my edits before, um, in a Jacksepticeye edit. Uh, anyway, um, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard is beautiful. It, it kind of almost feels like a little brother to Kisses on the Bottom, but with a little bit of energy, a little more energy to it. Man, I don't know. And I do like how kind of you, and, um... But there are good, there are a lot of tracks that I really like on there, actually. I think I'm going to put um, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard in Great, along with Egypt Station. Oh, Back to the Egg by Wings. Okay. Um, I really do love um, Arrow Through Me from Back, in the, from Back to the Egg. Um, but this is another one, kind of, kind of like... Um, Kind of, kind of, kind of like um, Flowers in the Dirt, where I haven't listened to it a lot. Um, but unlike Flowers in the Dirt, there is actually one that there there is a song at least on there, one song that I am attached to, which is like I said, um, Arrow Through Me. Um, I think Back in the Back to the Egg, I think is gonna have to go to Tolerable, but. Not in the same vein. In the sense, like, I just need to listen to it more. So, you know what? I'm gonna, I mean, you know what? I'm gonna give it a good. I think Tolerable is a little too rude to back to the egg. So, I'm gonna give it a good. Give My Regards to Broad Street. Okay, so Give My Regards to Broad Street is a lot of covers from Pipes of Peace, Tug of War, and a couple of Beatles things, from what I gather. And I think a few Wings things. I don't know. But I know there's covers in there, um, from his earlier work. Well, not covers, I guess. And I don't, I don't even know. It was not covers, because it's his song. I don't know what the term for that is, but you guys know what I mean. Um, well, if I was ranking on the movie, I would definitely put it at almost unbeatable, or at least great. Um, I think I'm gonna put it at tolerable, again. Like, actually this time. Because most of the songs aren't original. You know, like I said, they're kind of like new renditions. 
So I think I'm gonna have to put it at tolerable for that, because, you know... I mean, granted, I know he's trying to make a movie, but if I'm judging just on the music, I think I'm gonna have to put it at tolerable. What album... Oh, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, what album is this? I don't know what album that is. Never listened to. Ram! Ram, 1971. Oh, Ram, Ram might be one of the unbeatables because I love Long Haired Lady, Too Many People, Backseat of My Car, um, Admiral Halsey, um, Eat at home, God. There, there are a lot of good tracks. I'm not even naming all of them, and I'm, I'm already like, oh my God, this album is fucking lit. Yeah, I think Ram 1971 is going to be in the unbeatable category. That that album is amazing. Driving Rain 2001. <sighs> driving, you know, Driving Driving Rain is tricky because I adore Heather. You know, I love that song. I love, um, Your Loving Flame. Um, but there is one. Oh, yeah, and I do love the song Magic as well. Um, but there is one thing that a lot of people say about Driving Rain that I do agree with. The production and the overall tone is very melancholy, for understandable reasons. You know, it's very understandable why. But, you know, we, we, a lot of us, we don't go to, at least me, I shouldn't be speaking for the whole fandom, sorry, um, but me, personally, I typically go to Paul if I, you know, Paul's music if I want to have a good time. And I think a lot of other people can agree with me on that. Um... I think I think I'm gonna put Driving Rain at 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 tolerable because I do really like um, Your Loving Flame and Heather and Magic and About You and I Do. You know there are good tracks in there, but it's kind of a case of you got to be in the mood for it. Okay, Flaming Pie, 1997. This was the last album he made while Linda was alive and. Um, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of like um, "Flowers in the Dirt" for me. I, I'm only really attracted. Well, actually, no. There's two songs that I like. Sorry, I was gonna say one, but no, there are two, um, which is "Flaming Pie" and then "The World Tonight." <clears throat> oh, and, and "Beautiful Night." So I guess there's three. I, 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 I totally spaced that. Um, I think I'm gonna give "Flaming Pie" a good. Because it's not bad. It, it, it's kind of the same thing with Back to the Egg. Like, I really like the songs that I like. But I haven't really listened to the album enough. Okay, unlike Back to the Egg, though, I have listened to the full album of this. I have listened to the full album of Flaming Pie. But not in a really long time. I did it when I first joined the fandom and I discovered Flaming Pie, the song, and, you know, the world tonight, like I said. Um, I'm gonna have to listen to more of it, and maybe I could redo this ranking someday and bump it up to maybe great or something like that. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna keep it at good. London Town, 1977. Yeah, I think it came out right before James was born, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I do really, really like um, Children, Children, London Town, the title track. Um, who I don't know. It's definitely not a meh. It's definitely not awful. It's definitely not tolerable. Like, it, it, you, know what I, you know what I mean? Uh, I think I might put it at good. You know, same kind of thing. Like, there's not a many songs I'm really a attached to. But the ones that I... You know what? I actually do really... I'm gonna have to Google that. Is Mole of Kim Tyre part of that? Because if Mall of Kintyre's on there, I'm going to bump it up to great. So I need to look that up before I make any rash decisions. Oh, 
fuck it, my fuck. Alright, my other iPad didn't want to work, so hopefully I can find it on here. Mm -mm. Okay, it's a bonus track of that. See, and that's the thing. I don't know if it can. I don't know if it's. I don't know. I don't really want to count bonus tracks to stuff. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to keep London Town at good, because like I said, I don't really want to, I mean, like I said, I, I, I you know what I mean, because I don't, I don't know, that's another one, same with, same with, um, Egypt Station that I might switch, I might bump each one up more, I don't know, but I'll do a, an over analysis again once I'm done going through all the albums, but yeah. Egypt Station and London Town are definitely in the running to maybe get bumped up at least one. Alright, anyway. McCartney 3, 2020. This album came out months, like, like five months after I started the fandom or something. So it was kind of like my first exposure to, oh my god, Paul is releasing something new. And because of that... I'm, I'm kind of biased to it, because I, cause I, you know, I was there, it was the first album I was actually there for the hype of, because the hype of that album started, like, a month after I joined the fandom, so, I, I, you know, I don't want to be biased with that, because that has nothing to do with the music, um, but yeah, there's Seize the Day, which is very beatly, as Paul has said, um, Lavatory Lil, um, Winter Rose, um, yeah, I, I, I really like Lavatory Lil. Um, a lot of people say that it's a diss track towards his second wife, um, Heather Mills. And, yeah. When, when, when those rumors started, I didn't really know if it was true, because, like I said, I was new to the fandom when the song came out. And I, um, I didn't really know any of the history about that, so I was like, nah. He wouldn't do that, but, but who knows. But anyway, that's neither, that's neither here or there. Um, but Woman and Wives is a really good song. Pretty Boys is a really good song. Deep Deep Feeling is a really powerful song. Sliding, I really like playing video games to Sliding for some reason. McCartney 3, I think you're going to go to the great category. I really like you. I you know, the thing, the thing is with McCartney 3... Um, no hate. This is just kind of an observation that I think me and a lot of others have said. His voice isn't as up to par. I mean, granted, it's understandable. I'm not hating on the guy, you know, but... But it's just kind of a fact with that album. You know, but again, not hating. It's understandable. Um... But, yeah, the other, the other thing, too, is, um... Long Tail Winterbird and When Winter Comes, at least to me, they kind of sound similar. I don't know if that's just me, or maybe it was intentional, I don't know. But I don't like it when artists, unless it's specifically called a remix, I know that might be a weird personal rule to me, but I don't like it when artists have songs on the same album that sound the same to each other. And that's kind of why McCartney 3... That's the main reason why McCartney 3 is not in the unbeatable or almost unbeatable category. It's just little nitpicky things like that. McCartney 1, 1970. Um, it has Maybe I'm Amazed, which is a fucking amazing song. Junk. Uh... <clears throat> Let's see, uh, Lovely Linda, which is a cute little ditty, um, Teddy Boy, um, yeah, I actually really like, um, McCartney one a lot, actually, I really do like the Lovely Linda and Teddy Boy, I mean, granted, Lovely Linda is only, like, 40 seconds long, but it's a really cute song, um, 
I think I'm going to put it at, I don't know, because Mammy I'm Amazed is a really beautiful love ballad to Linda, like, and all that stuff, and, um, I really like it a lot, um, Yeah, I think I'm going to put it at um, almost unbeatable because Maybe I'm Amazed is, is a godly song. The only reason why it's not unbeatable is because it's not like Ram, where it's just like, at least to me, it's not like perfect, 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 you know what I mean? But it's almost unbeatable, definitely. Um, okay, Off the Ground, 1993. Um, I really love the title track, Off the Ground. I really like um, Get Out of My Way. And um, Come On People. I really like those three tracks a lot, actually. Um, it's kind of in the same vein as, like I said, London Town and um, Flaming Pie and Back to the Egg. More so, like, Back to the Egg and uh, Flaming Pie is... Like I said, I haven't really listened to the full album, but I do really like the songs that I really like. Um, so I think I'm just going to have to put it at a good. Um, I definitely need to listen to more of that. Like I said, the good, the good and tolerable, like I said, are kind of dependent on how much of the album I've actually listened to and how much I attach to a song, if that makes sense. Red Rose Speedway, um, 19, that was my dog, sorry, when did, when did Red Rose, I think it, I think it came out in 1973, but I'm not sure, yeah, 1973, okay, yeah, I didn't want, I didn't want to give wrong information, Red Rose Speedway, isn't, Live and Let Die on that album. Uh, yeah, I think Live and Let Die is on there. Mary Had a Little Lamb is on there. Which is really cute. Um, I, I need to listen to a man. See, this is what I mean. Like, I get hi hyper fixated on certain songs. And then I don't move on to the other to the other songs in the album. That's a really big personal problem. With me. Not that the songs are bad, but that's just kind of a personal tick I have, I guess. A trait that I have. No dissing to him. Um... I think I'm going to put it at good. Um, this is kind of teaching me <laughs> about my knowledge of Paul McCartney's music, actually. Um, anyway. Um, Memory Almost Full. Memory Almost Full is kind of like um, Egypt Station to me. Like, I just started exploring it a bit more. And I really like, um, Mr. Bellamy, um, Nod Your Head and In Private. And, um, and it's kind of in the same vein with people as Driving Rain, where it's very melancholy, and, you know, we don't go to Paul to get pissed. We go to Paul to have a good time. Um... And because of that, I'm almost I'm almost tempted to put it at meh, but because I do like Mr. Bellamy and In Private and Nod Your Head. Um, oh, and This Is The End, that's the other one. This Is The End is also a really good one. Um, oh man, this is tough, I don't know. Well, well it's not going to go into meh anymore. Um, but I'm debating between good and tolerable. I kind of, I kind of, that's kind of how my ranking is lately. <laughs> Most of this, I should say, is debating between good and tolerable. Um, hmm. I think I might put it at tolerable. Only because kind of the same issue with Driving Rain is... The, the album is very angry, obviously, because, see, Driving Rain, what came out after he lost Linda, and Memory Almost Full came out 
during the divorce with Heather Mills. And so you're just a very angry, again, understandable, but again, like we, like I said, me personally, and I think most of the fandom, we don't go to Paul to get aggro. We go there to have a good time. So, yeah. Anyway, Pipes of Peace. Okay, I actually listened to the entirety of Pipes of Peace with one of my friends recently, including the bonus tracks. I really love Odu a Koala which is a bonus track, so I can't really talk about it in the ranking of this, but I do love that song. Um, the Man, Say Say, The Other Me, um, and the title track, um, Pipes of Peace, they're all really good. I really like- oh, and Keep Undercover, that's another one. <clears throat> I think I might put Pipes of Peace in the great category. I, mean, I think I'm gonna put it at great. And again, I would put it at almost unbeatable, but like I said, I'm not really counting bonus tracks in my ranking, so that's why it's not going in the, un, in the almost beatable. Unbeatable. Okay, McCartney to 1980. Alright, so if you guys have been on my channel for a while, when I first um, joined Paul's Fandom, you might remember my channel was Temporary Bakery. Um, temporary secretary is, it has a special place in my heart to me, in the same vein as McCartney 3 in the sense that it had a lot of firsts for me, um, temporary secretary, um, was the song that solidified Paul as my favorite Beatle, because I really liked the chaoticness of it. And that whole album is kind of chaotic, um, you know, Front Parlor, Dark Room, um, Check My Machine is a bonus track, but, I don't know, that's not, that whole album, even ignoring the bonus tracks, is godly. <laughs> oh man, I, I might, people might think I'm insane, but I think I might put McCartney 2 at Unbeatable with Ram. Wait, whoops, not that one. That one. There we go. Now I can do a you tug of war. Tug of war, 1982. Um, this one, I really enjoy What's That You're Doing, um, Wonderlust, um, Tug of War, the title track, Ballroom Dancing. A lot of these tracks, and same with types of peace tracks, are in, um, um, give my regards to Broad Street, but these, but these albums, Pipes of Peace and Tug of War, are when those songs originated. So, that's kind of why I'm giving it more leeway. Um, I think I'm going to have to put Tug of War in the great category. Because there's a lot of songs I really like, but I'm not, like, borderline obsessed with them. So, yeah. Band on the Run. I think that's 1973, too. Let me check. Yeah, 1973. Okay. Um, I really like the title track, Band on the Run. Um, I think Jet is on this album, too, I think. And, um, 1985 is on there. Which is a really good one. I really like that. Oh, and fucking Mrs. Vanderbilt. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, Band on the Run, you might be in the almost unbeatable category because I, I, I do love um, Mrs. Vanderbilt and I do love 1985. Um, but unlike Ram and McCartney 2, I haven't heard the entire album. Like I said, I was just asking, was Jet even on there? I think it was. I guess, oh my god, my, the older fandom members are gonna fucking kill me. Um, yeah, I think, just personally, because I haven't listened to the entire album, um, Bang on the Run is gonna go on almost unbeatable. Okay, Press to Play, 1986. Um, I do like Press to Play. Um, but... Or Press, sorry. Press is the name of the song. 
I do like press, and I really like the music video for press. Um, but I'm judging on the actual songs, not the music video. Um, that's kind of the problem that I have with um, Flowers in the Dirt. There's only like one song on there that I really liked. I don't know. Mm. And the other thing is, like, with me personally, because I'm, like, a fan of Paul, I really don't want to put Press to Play or Flowers in the Dirt in the awful category. But I think I might, I might, I think I might put Press to Play in Meh and Flowers in the Dirt in the awful, because even, like, even, okay, sorry, I'm switching topics, but Rough Ride in um, Flowers in the Dirt, even though that's my favorite in that album, I never, like, all the other songs, like, like, those songs that I get attached to in all the other albums, I, I get, like, obsessed with them, borderline obsessed, I will not move on to any other songs on the album, it's just, all I want to hear is that song I'm attached to, but with Rough Ride and Press, I don't really have that feeling. Um, especially with Rough Ride. Um, yeah. Sorry, Flowers in the Dirt. You might have to go to Awful. Like I said, the older fans are probably going to murder me. And press to play. Oh. I think I'm going to put you in May. Wildlife. Wildlife um, is the first album by Wings. It came out in 1971, December of 1971, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I really like Bip Bop. I Am Your Singer. Uh, I think Hey Diddle is on this album. If not, it's on Ram. Or maybe it's on both, I don't remember. Um, but I, I love Bip Bop. I love I Am Your Singer. Um, oh yeah, and the, and the title track, Wildlife, too. <clears throat> I think I'm going to put Wildlife on the good category, because, you know, like I said, kind of like with all the good ca all the good songs, I haven't listened to the entire album, but the one, the songs that I am attached to, I am attached to, like, a lot. And like I said, I think Bip Bop would be the one that I'm attached to. Oh yeah, and give, give Ireland back to the Irish. Okay, actually, just because I remember, I remember that one all of a sudden. Yeah, wildlife, you're going to go to great. <laughs> just because give, give Ireland back to the Irish popped in my brain and <laughs> saved your ass. Okay, Wings at the Speed of Sound. This song has, this one, sorry, this album has um, Let Him In, which is a really good bop. Um, let's see. I like Let Him In. Oh yeah, Cook of the House, San Fairy Ann. Um, oh yeah, The Note She Never Wrote, I think is the name of that song. Um, man, Wings of the Speed of Sound is actually a pretty good one. I think I'm going to put that at good or great. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a great. Yeah, I I I don't want to be too harsh. Cause you know, like I said, I haven't heard the entire album. Well, actually, I have heard the entire album, but not in a really long time. Kind of kind of like Flaming Pie, but I'm ranking it higher because there are more songs on it that I'm attached to. Um, Wings Greatest. Isn't that like one of those um like best of. Like compilation albums. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think it is, but I'm not sure. Mm. I think I'm gonna have to put it at never listen to because I'm not sure about that. That's confusing me. <laughs> like I said, the older fans are going to kill me. 
All right, and the last one is Venus and Mars. Um, I really do like um, Give Me the Answer. Give me the answer, come on, eternally. I love you and you, you seem to like me. I do like that song a lot. It's really cute. Um, Venus and Mars, the title track is quite nice. Medicine Jar is quite nice. Mm. I think Venus and Mars, I think I'm going to put you at the good category. Well, I think that's going to be my tier list. Like I said, it's probably not perfect. Um, like I said, I haven't heard the entirety of all these albums because, like I said, I get attached to certain songs and don't move on. <laughs> Which is a really bad habit of me. That's not Paul's fault or anything. Um, but yeah. Maybe someday I'll actually get off my butt and actually listen to the entirety of all these albums again. And, um, and re-rank it someday. Um, but yeah, this is my current ranking right now, I think. I, I still feel bad about putting, um, Flowers in the Dirt in the awful category. Um... And here's the thing, I don't mean it like it's a bad, like, you know, I hate it. It's not like that. It's just, you know, like I said, I, I don't, I just can't attach to it for some reason. Like, even Rough, like I said, even Rough Ride, I don't, I don't even, hell, I don't even know if that's the name of the song I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I just can't attach to that. So that's why it's really awful. But anyways, um, let me know what you guys' opinions are, and... Like I said, maybe I'll do this again in a couple months. Um, but yeah, that is my ranking of Paul's music. Um, stay sugary sweet, and I will see you next time.